G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, the market is pretty much on fire at the moment. Uh, it is really starting to gather pace. I mean, oh, this is getting low. We're nearly under 50% right now. Now, there is a story uh, from Mike oh, that talks about Mike Novogratz and his, excuse me, thoughts about the market. And I really do get the same feeling. And we'll get to that shortly, though. But I mean, look at this. It's just green everywhere. I mean, Dogecoin is absolutely rocketing. You know, again, I had some Dogecoin. I sold it on a double, bought some more, sold it on a double again, and then just never got back into it. And I'm kind of kicking myself. But I mean, look. Profit's profit, you can't complain, but it is really gone from a long way. I mean, I think I was buying it well under a cent, so it's, you know, 26x and some, you know, even more. So extremely well done to all those Dogecoin holders. You know, whether it has any real world value or not, I don't know. We'll, you know, we'll have to wait and see, but, you know, for anyone who's holding it, you know, congratulations to them doing extremely well. Again, Bitcoin dominance, well, we're nearly under 50%. ETH dominance is slowly rising. Gas prices are coming down. And it's just a sea of green everywhere. Now, it's Friday here in Australia. So that means the weekend is coming. We haven't had any, had any big retracements yet. So just, you know, expect that we might get, it might not be a massive one, but we're likely to get some kind of weekend retracement. That's what's been happening for you know, quite some time now. And, and in bull markets, it generally sort of happens. There's anywhere, again, from roughly sort of Thursday evening right through to Monday morning, somewhere in amongst there, you'll generally get a weekend sell-off. And particularly if you get a bit of a pump over the weekend and the CME gap gets created and things like that. But let's have a look. What's done really well in the last 24 hours? Because, I mean, 108% in Doge. I mean, it's going to be hard to imagine something's done better than that. But let's have a look. No, it was Doge. There we go. But I mean, Ethereum Classic, what? How has that done 45% in the last 24 hours? Yeah, that's, that, that's the crypto markets. And again, this is what's making me very, very nervous at the moment. You know, things like Ethereum Classic, which is, you know, almost sort of dead. Uh, you know, doing 45%. You know, Doge doing 108%. But I mean, Maker's done well. That's a pretty good coin, in my personal opinion, not financial advice. Bitcoin gold, again, I don't understand that. You know, NEO out of nowhere, uh, a bit of a sort of dead chain as well. Not a whole lot going on, a lot of talk, but I don't really see anything. You know, Bitcoin cash, this is just, yeah. I am concerned, ladies and gentlemen. In all fairness, I literally am concerned. I do feel like there is going to be a big retracement coming not to in the very near future, if not this weekend in the next couple of weeks. But look, I've been wrong before. Don't take my word as gospel. You make your own decisions. But this is a little bit concerning at the very least. All right, what hasn't done well? What's really struggled in the last 24 hours? Not a whole lot. KuCoin's down a bit. X, of course, they pumped so crazy. So that was, you know, bound to sort of happen. Digibyte, Avalanche. Look, no major losses, though, really. You know, 12%. That's nothing too major. I mean, they're still up for the seven days. Now, again, that's not exactly great. But like I say, anything over 15% uh, in losses is a fairly big loss. And anything over 15% gains in the 24-hour period is a pretty good gain as well. So nothing sort of too crazy. Again, V-chain coming down. But look, it's up nearly 50% for the week. So, you know, fair enough. Likewise, stacks, losses, very, very minimal. Some pretty crazy gains out there. Now, I want to follow up with some charts that we were looking at the other week. So... Here is Matic slash Polygon, depending on what you want to call it. It's Polygon now. It used to be Matic. And I showed this chart. It was forming a nice base. And look what happened. Boom. It started to take off a bit. Now, if we go based on previous history, roughly here was the top. So it was about 310 Satoshis to the top. 540 Satoshis. Nearly doubled. Not quite. A little bit under, but nearly doubled. We go from 542 Satoshis, because this is against Bitcoin, to 936 Satoshis, almost doubled. Again, not quite, almost. So really, if this is just, you know, sort of history repeating itself, we've got to basically double this. We're only at 700, 
Uh, where are we? So we're only at 708, 712 Satoshis there. We really need to almost double this, so it takes us up to nearly 1,800 Satoshis. If it plays out like you know it has in the past, again, from 310 to 540, 540 to you know 940 almost, not quite doubling, a little bit less, but you know thereabouts. So really, if history is to play out, so this base is still really only just kind of touching where it's got to before. Uh, I think there's some you know pretty good upside coming from Matic but again I feel like we're probably going to have a correction somewhat soon I could be wrong and look I hope I'm wrong and we'll get to that soon but if there's no kind of big correction I think Matic is setting up or well, Polygon is setting up really really nice for another good leg up link so it's been following this pattern for a long long time now this is on the log chart you can take the log chart off and it changes a little bit and we'll have a look at that but we can see it kept bouncing off this bouncing off this bouncing off this and then we had this big fall off it came back up and retested it now if we take the log chart off it's still a very similar chart it's just this line changes a bit this is now just the medium line between the top and the bottom instead of just the base but what we can see is have a look what link is doing now it's coming back and it's retesting some old sort of support resistance up around about here so if it can now get on top of this and start to hold it because at the moment it looks like it's just kind of it's finding some resistance at this old sort of resistance and one uh, support against Bitcoin if it can get on top of this then I think it can quite easily start to retest this kind of level again against Bitcoin and that's what we got to remember this is not against the dollar the dollar value is still going up because Bitcoin's basically going up so Everything else's dollar value is increasing, but is it outpacing Bitcoin? At the moment, you could say it is a little bit, but again, it's just kind of retesting some levels there. So at the moment, I still think Link looks pretty good. Again, it would have been good to sort of pick it up back down here, but like I said, it might not get there. And it did use old sort of resistance as new support. We can see that here. That's exactly what it did. And so now it's starting to make a move. This could be just a very, very, very short kind of pullback. Again, before we stretch out to something like this, you know, get back to, you know, the 16, what is it? 16, 169,000 Satoshi level. So again, Satoshi's not dollars. Uh, and if Chainlink could get back up there again, well, then the dollar value of Chainlink would be absolutely huge. At the moment, we're just sort of... Uh, testing a sort of key level against bitcoin so still looking pretty good i think it, i think it could be a good buy again it would have been better way back down here but we didn't get there and it would have been better back down here but you may have already missed that but i think it could have another leg up secret network token all right so again like i said we had this wedge and we had some support here and it bounced almost perfectly and now look at it starting to make its next move up but here's the scary thing. So secret network token, and this is against Bitcoin. It is, this is where we are right now. We're at about the 7,300 Satoshi level. <laughs> Look where we've been. Now this is based off the Enigma token because that's what SRT is kind of a fork of that. So at the moment, SRT, which again sort of was Enigma, it's a fork from it or a variant of it, depending on sort of what you want to call it. At the moment, it's just retesting some old key Bitcoin levels. So it could still have a really, really big move left in it. So that is very, very interesting. So for me, SRT, uh, Secret Network, SCRT, uh, is still looking pretty good against the Bitcoin pair and could possibly have a whole lot of upside for it. Still, even though it's pumped a little bit in the last sort of few days, it's just kind of catching up to its, you know, catching up to Bitcoin. It hasn't actually gone out and gone to new all-time highs or anything like that. I don't know if that'll ever be eclipsed again. Uh, I think that was, you know, sort of about the day that Enigma came out. Uh, not Enigma, yeah, Enigma. Uh, but that was the peak back in 2017-18. We may not even be able to get to there, but I do think we should be able to get to somewhere in and around about here, and that's still a long way from where we are at the moment. So things are looking really, really good. Sorry, gone the wrong way. In my opinion, for SRT, I think it is looking quite good. 
in comparison to where it's been before. So SRT, again, there we go. It's, it has bounced off there. Now it's just, you know, we've got to wait and see, is it going to go to those next legs up? And at the moment, with the Bitcoin dominance getting so low, I do get the feel like we're going into a bit of a parabolic altcoin rush, and I think that's what's going to happen. I think then we're going to have a big sell-off of pretty much everything. I don't know how low it's going to go, and I think it might be Bitcoin getting up to around that $80,000 mark, and then we could have a big crash, and that could happen very, very quickly. But again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. And I'm not saying it is going to happen. It's just something I've got in the back of my mind. So I am taking some profits and having them sitting on the side for if there is a really big uh, dump. But look, if there isn't, then it doesn't matter. Profits are profits, you know. Unrealized gains are just that. They're never anything into yourself. All right, the graph, we had a look at this. It's still forming a pretty good base. Now it has pumped up a little bit, but again, this is looking like it's still just forming a really nice base. This is, you know, against Bitcoin at least, it's been kind of traveling sideways since the 12th of March. So that's about a month now it's been traveling sideways. So is it going to get ready for its next big leg up against Bitcoin? <sighs> you know, that's the million dollar question. But at the moment, I mean, it's it's got a family, a fairly familiar pattern. Pumps up comes back down and almost uses uh, an old resistance point uh, as new support and it did round about there i'm sure if you went into the hourlies and that it probably would be about there then it slowly starts to make its way back up then it has a big explosive move and then comes back down and tests once what was old resistance becomes new support so is this getting ready to make is basically this this the start of this before it really starts to make a move up. It looks pretty good at the moment. Again, no guarantees in life, but for me, I am adding to my position uh, in the graph. Aave. A lot of people probably thought Aave was dead and were like, yep, it's done. You know what I mean? Like it's it's got as much gains as it can. Well, look at this. It's starting to make moves again. And you've got to remember, these are all against Bitcoin. This is not the dollar value. The dollar value, you know, can fluctuate a bit. But what this is saying is that Aave is actually down against Bitcoin. So it has room to move. Now, will it you know, eclipse the old all-time highs, basically up here against Bitcoin? No one knows for sure, but gee, based on history, you know, it kind of does these things. That's what it done. So you know, will this travel sideways for a while before it um, makes its move up? And could it be something like this where we continue to lose some more value? Absolutely, but at the moment, we got a lot of sort of sideways movement really since around about sort of, you know, here, let's say. And again, 13th of March, about the last month, just sort of traveling sideways with Bitcoin. So it hasn't actually made its next big move up against Bitcoin. So looking good, Synthetics Network. Again, it's been fairly sleepy on the, the dollar front. Like it made it up to $24 and then it dropped all the way down to $7. Now I think it's trading around about 20 something dollars. Let's have a look. And it's dropped way down as well. So it's about number 50 something. So there we go. Number 48, $22.58. So it's actually getting close to its old all time high dollar value again, which was $24. But we can see it's just starting to make moves. I think people have kind of gone to sleep on Synthetics Network. And a lot of that is to do with the Ethereum fees and all fairness. Like, unless you're, you know, sort of mega rich, you just. <laughs> Yeah, you can't really use it. We need those layer two solutions and all that to happen. But I still think Synthetics Network is going to be an absolute behemoth, particularly once all this layer two solution stuff gets sorted out. And, you know, the average Joe can use it. They're not having to spend, you know, $20, $30 to try and collect maybe only a couple of dollars worth of, uh, you know, synthetic staking value. That's, you know... Fair enough if, you know, it's going to cost you 2 or $3 every single time. People could probably live with that. But when it's costing 20 or $30 and maybe you're not even getting $20, $30 worth of value from synthetics, well, then you can't do anything with it. And that's where a lot of people are at the moment. But I think synthetics network, synthetics network sorry, is going to come back super hard and super strong. A lot of these ethereum plays are really going to blow out the box once ethereum gets their stuff sorted and i do think it'll come sooner rather than later ethereum they're just not going to sit back on their on their heels and watch you know things like binance coin and everything else do so well because they have next to zero fees 
I think it'll happen before the end of the year. It's just, you know, I wouldn't be waiting till the full end of the year for those sort of things to happen. And we can only hope that e E1559, excuse me, really does help because we can't, you know, we need something to come sooner rather than later, even if it's just a little bit to bring the fees down to like maybe $10 or $5 compared to the $20, $30 they've been. That will really help. But the full rollout of ETH 2.0 where you're basically paying, you know, maybe a couple of cents to a dollar or two for a transaction on Ethereum, that is what is really needed. And once that happens, and I am confident it will, I think there'll be no stopping Ethereum network but again, if that doesn't happen sooner rather than later, like they couldn't afford for this to, you know, take till, you know, 2022, 2023. I think that's just way too long. And, you know, things like uh, Binance Coin and other chains just in general, Polkadot and that, they'll simply take over. They'll, they'll just leave Ethereum for dead. Ethereum do need to get on the move. But anyway, so that was looking pretty good. Now, XRP, I did say I'd have another look. Here we go against the Bitcoin value. It is now basically, at the moment at least, it's holding some old sort of key uh, support levels. So that's really, really good. It hasn't gone parabolic yet. I know people have got it ex re really excited. And this move was good, don't get me wrong. But it's only brought it back. You would have still been better off uh, in Bitcoin, except for the last, you know, maybe 10 days staying in Bitcoin because this was well undervalued. So now... I think XRP is looking pretty good, but again, there's no guarantees in life. Now you just got to hope that it is going to start to really excel and outpace Bitcoin. And again, you know, get back to this Bitcoin level here of 19,788 Satoshis or even, you know, break this 23,000 sort of Satoshi level. So it looks good at the moment. All right, the Bitcoin chart itself. Here we go, the moving averages. Like I said, we bounced almost perfectly off the 50-day moving average. That really is the premium buying point at the moment. But I am somewhat concerned that we might have a bit of a shakeout or a washout, and that's exactly what uh, Mike Novogratz has sort of said, that he, he thinks it's coming. Whether it's you know next week or next couple of months, no one really knows. But I think once that happens, I think you know the 100 to definitely maybe even the 200-day moving average would be the really good buy points. Whether it gets down to here or not, I don't know. There's just too much exuberance in the market. And even from the big players, I mean, if they see Bitcoin get down to about $44,000, they're jumping on it. They will. They'll just buy it up. I just I don't know if we're going to be able to get down there. I think maybe we can get down to about the fifty thousand dollar level. That's definitely a possibility. But the buying pressure when it's trying to be pushed down will just be immense. I think. I think it'll have a real hard time getting down there. But look, I've been wrong before. All right, let's get on to a couple of stories that I really liked. UK Hedge reportedly plans to invest $84 million in crypto. So again, these are things that are happening, and this is why I think it's going to be hard for Bitcoin to be pushed down that low. At the moment, I'm not saying that won't happen in, you know, sort of months to at least, you know, a year or two's time, definitely, but at the moment, I think too hard. Brevin Howard, a United Kingdom-based asset management firm, is reportedly planning to directly invest in digital assets after more than a year of exposure to the crypto space. According to a Bloomberg report, Brevin Howard Asset Management will be allocating 1.5% of its $5.6 billion in its main hedge fund to crypto, which roughly equates to $84 million. And I, I think that'll go up. They're not going to do that straight away, but I do think once they really start to see the profits from that, Provided they can hold through a couple of shakeouts and washouts that we're going to talk about, I think they will do just fine. You've got to have a long-term sort of strategy for Bitcoin anyway, because you don't know whether you're buying it at the best possible price. You just never do. You might think you are, and it turns out you aren't. Or you might think you that you bought it at a really crap pipe crap price and it turns out to be one of the best prices you could ever buy it at, buy it at. you just don't know but you know you buy it at 60,000 today look in three months time it could be worth $20,000 or less but then four years time it could be worth hundreds of thousands that's what it's been doing it's that kind of volatility that we've seen I think that volatility slows down I don't think we're going to see that kind of volatility uh, from Bitcoin anymore you know the upside will still be pretty good I just don't think we're going to see 80% corrections in Bitcoin I think too many people will just jump all over it once they see the price get you know 
say 30% lower than currently where it is or 40% lower I think it'll just be every person on earth will be trying to buy it up and particularly the big dogs so the asset management firm will reportedly be focusing on a wide range of cryptocurrencies in addition to bitcoin betting that the price of the crypto assets will continue to rise so again these are this is smart money they're not going to be you know they're not throwing everything into it obviously but 1.5 percent it's not chump change it's a lot of money and they are getting in and they wouldn't be getting in if they thought it was going to dump tomorrow Yes, they would have done their research, and yes, they can accept that you know you could have a fairly hefty pullback in the next sort of short term time frame. But they know that holding it long term, they will most likely be better off. All right, PayPal. So PayPal and other top tier financial corporations have gathered to discuss the rapid adoption of cryptocurrencies and their role in the financial system. Speaking at a conference with several, several crypto-friendly corporations, PayPal CEO Dan Shulman revealed that the company is looking to expand its crypto services as digital currencies take a leading role in the financial system. A leading role. They are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. This is, you know, we are still early. There's only, you know, once upon a time it was like maybe 2% of the Earth's population has crypto. Now it might be up to about 5%. 10% I think would be really pushing it. So that's what we need to remember. There's still sweet FA amount of people involved in crypto. You know, all these big companies are getting in because they do that first. If you're here when they're getting in or even before they're getting in, then you are early. So Shulman June the 2021 Blockchain 50 Symposium uh, together with dozens of executives from technological and financial space, including Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy, Guy Sheffield, uh, uh, yeah, Sheffield, head of crypto uh, at Visa. Speaking to the assistant director at Forbes, Michael De Castillo, Shulman noted the uh, current financial system, system lacks the innovation and inclusion that the crypto assets can provide. And this is so true. And he gave the example of numerous unbanked citizens in the US states that can't receive a stimulus check. Because they don't have a bank account, so they can't get it. Crypto changes that. You don't need a bank account. You just need to have a crypto wallet, and then it can get to you. There's still going to be issues with KYC. We're just going to have to deal with that. But look, people not having bank accounts, that is a worry. If you've got a phone, and just about everyone has a phone, they're going to be able to get involved in cryptocurrencies, and they're going to be able to receive their stimulus checks as long as they have, again, KYC done. He added that PayPal's crypto service could reach a $200 million volume uh, transaction in only a matter of months. Now, in saying that, he said it could take much longer, noting that it took Coinbase 13 months to generate $200 million in volume. So, you know, they, they think it could happen in the next few months, but look, there's as much of a chance that that kind of won't happen either. Right, world's largest uh, investment firm, so BlackRock, uh, asset manager says that he is fascinated by cryptocurrency, believing that it could become a great asset class. It's, there's no could, it is going to, 100%. And even he knows that. Now, here's where they throw a little bit of FUD in to slow people down so they can, you know, get on top of the market. However, he said that Black, BlackRock has not received many inquiries from its institutional clients about having Bitcoin in their portfolios. I guess only they would know. But I would say there's definitely been enough interest. And again, like they've invested into uh, Grayscale. BlackRock have invested into Grayscale uh, and their GBTC thing. So, yeah, I've got no doubt it's going to be a great asset class. It's going to be one that will change the entire financial system. You know, so many millionaires will have been made from this space over the next sort of five to maybe even 10 years because we've still got a long way to go before we have that true mass adoption this is just early players getting in this is what happens these big guys they are generally the early movers it doesn't mean there was never anyone earlier it just means they're early so if they're still only just getting in you're super early and i do think this is going to be massive and provided you can get into the right coins and you can you know hold for long enough and you know if you're really lucky you know sell the peaks and buy the dips and all the rest of it unbelievable wealth can uh, be found from that but it's not you know that's easier said than done and we need to remember that 
All right, now here's the story I wanted to get into. So Galaxy's, Galaxy Digital's Mike Novogratz warns of a crypto market washout. I, I think so too. Again, we go back to like, you know, there was just so much green and red and stuff all over the, sorry, so much green all over the place. It just gets, it's concerning. And again, Bitcoin dominance is falling. I think the cycle is going to be 2013 all over again. So hopefully this will load. We have looked at this before, but I think it's 2013 all over again. This is what I think we're about to see. We're gonna see this big pump and then we're gonna have a nasty sort of sell-off and this will take a while. It won't just happen overnight and be done within a week. It'll probably take a couple of months and then we're going to start to make another big move up again. And this will be the washout. Altcoins will get hit super hard. Even Bitcoin will get super hard, hit super hard. And look, I think it's coming somewhere between sort of 80,000 and 100,000, thereabouts. I think the $100,000 mark is going to be this. It's going to be really hard to get through and tons of people will take profit there. And then those who buy up around here or, you know, excuse the French, but panic and sort of shit themselves. Uh, and then we'll have this big sell-off here. And then again, it'll even come up and then roll over again before we make a big move like this. I think this will be, you know, that kind of two, $300,000 peak. And this will be that $100,000 peak. And I do believe that that's what we're going to see. Sorry. Over here, I think this is going to peak up. It's going to fall off, come way back down again before it then starts to make its next move up. But again, I think we've got to get up around this $100,000 mark before that happens. But look, again, it could come a whole lot earlier. All right, I've rambled on for a little while. I don't want to take up too much more time. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train at the moment because things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.